Raquel and welcome to my channel Out of the Past where I talk about classic movies. And today I'm doing a review of the Warner Archive Blu-ray edition of this film right here, Mr. Blandings Builds His Dream House from 1948. This stars Cary Grant, Myrna Loy, Melvin Douglas, also features performances by um, Harry Shannon, Louise Beavers, Reginald Denny, and it is directed by H.C. Potter. So Mr. Blanding's Builds His Dream House is a hilarious screwball comedy from 1948 and Cary Grant places ad executive who works on Madison Ave in Manhattan just like he's a madman essentially and he lives in these really cramped quarters with his wife Myrna Loy and his two daughters and basically he's trying to provide everything for his family he has a high powered job but they're completely outgrown of their tiny, tiny apartment. So the plan is, is Myrna Loy's character, Muriel, is essentially working with a um, um, interior decorator to see if they can remodel the house. Now that will take about $7,000 to do, but instead they decide against the advice of their lawyer friend, played by Melvin Douglas, to buy a 35 acre spread in Connecticut. They buy this like rundown home from the Revolutionary War era and it is literally falling apart. The like pieces of the roof are falling. They like, you know, when Cary Grant opens the door and walks in, he falls through something and he calls out to Muriel like help help um, and there's like problems with water there's problems with flooding um, there's a trout stream that has no water there's like all sorts of like structural problems they have to tear down the house start over and anyone who has dealt with a real estate nightmare which is a lot of us who have actually ever purchased any form of real estate you know, there is jargon you don't understand. There um, are particulars that you don't anticipate. That happens here. And because they're building anew, there's all sorts of like things with construction um, that of course the characters Jim and, Bla um, Jim and Muriel Blandings don't understand. And any decision they make gets them more and more into trouble. And plus they're going into this whole situation emotionally, which Melvin Douglas's character, who's a lawyer and an advisor, is telling them it's not the best way to approach this because things start adding up. They are basically being ripped off. So the whole thing is basically their evolu like the evolution of this project how things go awry and it is basically just one error, one disaster after another and the bills start piling up. And you know, back in Manhattan, Mr. Blandings has his job and he, that's suffering too. And his home life is suffering. His daughters are like, um, you know, basically seeing their parents bicker and um, commenting on that and then Myrna Loy's character is caught up in all this and then there's this also this romantic triangle thrown into the mix it turns out that Melvin Douglas's character and Myrna Loy's character were dated back in the day so there's like this jealousy element because he's always around the girls call him uncle um, oh uncle Bill his character is Bill Cole um, they call him Uncle Bill, so he's kind of like this, this like third wheel, and that's essentially how Melvin Douglas plays this character. He's kind of like a hanger-on advisor, but he's also kind of emotionally invested in this family and what they do, which I think is an interesting um, dynamic. So this is essentially a really relatable comedy, which I have to say it's kind of an outlier for the time. I mean, there were a lot of, um, especially in the 40s, comedies about family um, structure 
but a lot of them don't necessarily translate to today because they were very steeped in the culture of the time. But this is actually quite relatable because we are still buying real estate, you know. We are still having financial struggles, although his financial situation is a lot more different than, um, you know, what your average, like, man working in corporate um, in one income household, which is kind of a rarity these days. Um, it would be in that sort of financial situation. It's a lot more extreme now. And I'll go through the numbers in a second. But I think it's interesting that we still go through this. Like anytime you, you know, delve into real estate, you're going to be overwhelmed. There's going to be things that you don't expect. There's going to be circumstances that completely throw you for a loop or end up making you spend more money. And God forbid you get a fixer upper. There's a whole sort of like, um, added headaches that come with that and that's still incredibly relatable so and this film was remade twice it was made as the money pit in 1986 with um tom hanks and shelly long and then it was remade again in 2007 are we done yet with ice cube so it's still totally relevant today and i think that makes it really interesting and then you have Cary grant and myrna loy who were together in a um comedy the year before also released by rko these are both rko movies um that one was the bachelor and the bobby Soxer. And in that film, Myrna Loy plays a judge who's the older sister of a teenager um, uh, played by Shirley Temple. And Shirley Temple's character is completely obsessed with Cary Grant, who's like the sophisticated bachelor guy. But of course, um, Cary Grant and Myrna Loy are more age appropriate and their romance kind of blossoms too um, in that story. So they were kind of a hit in that. This is and Mr. Blanding's builds his dream house is kind of like their sort of like reunion, like getting them back on screen together since they worked so well. And it was interesting to read about in Myrna Loy's um, autobiography, which is right here, is she said that um, she had a blast making this movie and she really paid attention to Cary Grant's. Um, style of acting he she says that he was really really good at playing somebody who was frustrated or um, exhausted or overwhelmed and that like he he really shined in those moments um, either in comedy or drama but in this case the it was comedy and she kind of played to his strengths so they work so well together and i think that's part partly why is because she really paid attention to um to his style and kind of molded her style to kind of make sure that they really worked really well on screen plus they were both like amazing actors Myrna Loy obviously known for playing Nora in the Thin Man series and Cary Grant if you're a classic film fan you know who Cary Grant is and he was just so good at comedy um, bringing a baby is a great example of that so these were two really great um, actors put together this is just a really fun comedy and incredibly relatable so um now he plays a um a madman essentially he works he's an ad executive he writes copy for ad campaigns and during the film he's working on um a campaign for wham ham and he can't get a slogan and during the whole time the real estate um uh, ordeal of building his dream house is basically taking like sapping him of his creative juices so the whole the whole deal is the fact that he's got this job and literally the job is what's funding the dream house and help and like supporting his family he really needs that job and at the beginning someone else got fired for not contributing enough to the ad, to a particular ad campaign so he's already at risk of losing his job and his funding which is very problematic so he has to come up with this campaign for wham ham he's an ad man in new york city it's a one income household and he earns fifteen thousand dollars a year it calculates to 172,996 dollars which i have to say for a medium income household like a medium income for a household today that is really high and he's this is just a one income household 
today it's mostly two income households and hardly any of them reach that amount. Um, that is, you're actually pretty comfortable if you're making that amount of money um, for just a one income household, let alone a two income household. So already he's he's doing pretty well for himself. The house is a tear down, um, but it, it sits on 35 acres, although it sold to him as 50 acres. And um, he buys it for 18, um, thousand dollars with inflation today would be two hundred and seven thousand five hundred ninety six dollars which for a home for even a fixer upper with 35 acres is pretty darn good and the other option they had was to renovate their apartment in Manhattan and that renovation would have cost seven thousand dollars um, and adjusted for inflation that's eighty thousand seven hundred and thirty one dollars which I have to say that seems kind of on par with um, I mean, it wasn't really going to be a renovation. It was going to be more like they were talking about like tearing down a wall or something, but it was really going to be just reorganizing and refurnishing the home. So it was a little more efficient. Although when you actually see what the plan part of the plan is, it doesn't seem like it would be very efficient at all. Now the total cost with everything involved was $38,000. So adjusted for inflation, the sale of the home and all of the um, all of the things that needed to be um, built or added um, ends up thirty eight thousand dollars in nineteen forty eight, which is four hundred and thirty eight thousand in twenty twenty one. Now. So Mr. Blanding's Built His Dream House was actually based on a novel by the same name by Eric Hodgins. He was a um, vice president of Time Incorporated back in 1939 when he published his novel. And it was based on his experience buying, his dream, buying and building his dream house in 19, uh, well, sorry, in the, in the 1930s. Um, and in Connecticut. So basically it's, it's, it's based on a true story. And he had the same nightmares. He and his wife got into this uh, situation. They were based in New York. They needed a bigger place. Um, everything went downhill. <laughs> he spent way too much money. And um, in real life, he ended up losing the house a couple years after it was all purchased and redone and he was hoping that the sales of the first book and also there was a sequel too that was um, written as well and the sale of the film right rights to RKO would help him um, buy back the house but that ended up not happening. So the house Blanding's Way is a real house in New Milford, Connecticut and it still stands today and the house that's in the movie was actually built in Malibu State Park and it also still stands today. That is basically part of the park. I'm not really sure how it's used, but it was built as kind of like an art deco colonial style house. And part of the um, campaign for the film, and I'm not really sure on the details, I can only find limited information about this, but it looks like 74 similar homes were built across the country. Um, and they were the blending style home. And one of them, I found out this information because one of them was actually built in Spokane, Washington. And there was an article about that in their um, the Historical Society's website and the house still stands today. And basically these houses were built in the style of the finished house in the movie. And they were like fully decked. They had, um, they were fully furnished. They had all sorts of like, um, um, because basically in like the 40s and 50s, it was all about the home and um, making the home as technology technologically advanced as possible. So this was like outfitted with everything a husband and wife would need for their home to raise their family and to and have like all of the the latest um, the latest and greatest essentially. So I think that's really interesting. I'm I'm curious to see. I would love to learn more about like what happened to these homes were they all sold i mean they were also like a lot more expensive than, <laughs> than what um what was spent um on the on the actual house that that the blandings built um but i just think that's a really interesting way to promote it and this was a rko film that was made in conjunction with um, Selznick. Selznick International Pictures had dissolved by that point. So David O. Selznick was working um, through a production company he had was like Selznick. Um, oh man, I forget that. It was like 
a Selznick organizational release or something. I don't know. It's like a strange production company name. Um, oh, Selznick releasing organization. That's what, that's what it was. So basically this was a combined um, production with RKO. Dory Sherry was working for Selznick at the time, but he was about to transition over to RKO and he was involved. This was one of his productions. So it was kind of like a strange kind of um, transitional period. And um, it was kind of a strange uh, combination of two production companies. Um, so I think that's really interesting. And this was directed by H.C. Potter, who did a handful of movies in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. He originally wanted Irene Dunn to star in it with Cary Grant, but she was unavailable. And um, Irene Dunn and um, Cary Grant had made a few films together, notably like My Favorite Wife and Penny Serenade. So they would have been a really great um, combo for this, but I think him and Myrna Loy worked exceptionally well. And this was also filmed by um, cinematographer James Hong Wow, who is one of like one of my favorite figures to study. He did such amazing work in films like HUD from 1963. Seconds from 1966 is one of my favorites because of all the cool like angles and um, like it uses like a fisheye lens and like it distorts imagery. It's really, really fantastic. Now, um, cinematography is kind of like out of my scope, but something I want to learn more about. But um, this I did find out from the AFI catalog and I'll read it to you now. Um, cinematographer James Wong Hao employed a new technique whereby a standard lens was combined with a zoom lens on a crane mounted camera. And this was basically to reveal what the home looked like at the end. So this is great shot at the end where you kind of zoom out and you see the whole property. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, and James Wong Howe also worked on the Thin Man movies, which also starred Myrna Loy, which is really fun. Mary Shannon plays this really fun character who um, is basically trying to help the Blandings find a water source. And he's just like a little shy of where the actual water source is. And the way he talks is really kind of like very mellow and gentle. Um, he's trying to deliver some bad news, but trying to do it very gently. So. He's a really fun character. And then Louise Beavers, who um, is who was an African-American actress, played unfortunately just a lot of maid roles, which was um, unfortunately at the time what was available to African-American women to play, kind of like what Hattie McDaniel played in many movies, including Gone with the Wind. Um, and in this one, she plays the family maid and um, she actually has this big part at the end where she kind of saves the day, which I think is really um, fun. We have this on Blu-ray from the Warner Archive Collection. I actually already own this on DVD. This is the DVD edition. This is a really old DVD edition. It is out of print. Um, this is actually from just Warner Brothers back when, before the Warner Archive Collection existed. Um, and I believe the Warner Archive collection has this on DVD and Blu-ray, but you definitely want to get the Blu-ray. I did notice it's so much sharper and clearer and crisper in the Blu-ray edition. Now, um, and, and this is a restored edition, so it looks really, really great. And they do a really wonderful job with their restorations. Um, you're not going to get a lot of extras. I mean, the extras on the Blu-ray are the exact same extras that were on the DVD. So you get some extras and what you get are, um, there's this cartoon called The House of Tomorrow, which is really fun and basically it kind of shows a goofy kind of imagining of what a uh, modern house with all the technology would look like. It has like a sandwich maker that like basically um, cuts up your bread and cuts up your salami and like like slight like puts it all together and like um, shoots it out to different plates um, there's like this running gag with like um, mother-in-law jokes throughout the throughout the little short which is kind of funny it's just kind of a fun um, it's a fun cartoon and and it kind of it just goes with the with the theme of the movie. This also has two radio productions, which I have to say I love the old radio productions of like movie stories, um, especially the Lux Radio broadcasts. But they're not good extras for Blu-rays. I almost feel like this would be an excellent like QR code you can scan with your phone and maybe listen to it on your drive to work or 
um, at home when you're doing chores, but I don't want to be sitting in my living room listening to a radio broadcast. I mean, I know that's what people did back in the day, but it's just not... It's just not something I would do today. But um, anyways, if that is your thing and you want to listen to a radio broadcast while sitting in your living room, um, there is the Lux Radio Theater broadcast um, with Cary Grant and Irene Dunn, who was originally supposed to be in the film um, from 1949. And then a Screen Directors Playhouse broadcast with Cary Grant and Betsy Drake, who um, was his wife at the time. So they they do um, production of that. And in this one, um, this one just had Cary Grant movie trailers. This one has a re-release of the original trailer all cleaned up. Um, so I have to say, when I did watch this Blu-ray, I did notice how crisp it was. I even noticed like features of Verna Loy's face that I didn't notice before, which is kind of a strange thing to notice. But um, as I said before, Warner Archive does an amazing job with their Blu-rays. This is no exception. Um, it's really the only time I ever noticed black and white films um, on Blu-ray and I think wow that looks really good um, another example of that is Out of the Past from 1947 which is one of my favorite movies and the inspiration for the name of my my website and my channel um, that looks absolutely it's like one of my favorite Blu-ray editions it just looks absolutely fat, fantastic and that's from the Warner Archive collection so I recommend getting this movie it is literally one of the best comedies I don't know anyone who doesn't enjoy it. Highly recommend it. Looks great on Blu-ray. Thank you, Warner Archive, for sending me a copy of this for review. And I hope you like this video. Stay tuned for more. Um, and I really appreciate you watching. I hope you subscribe and like this video. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye. Mm -hmm.